Hi everyone, this is Amy Johnson Crow, and welcome to this week's Archives.com live stream. This week we are going to be talking about compiling what you find so it makes sense later. If you've been climbing your family tree for any length of time, chances are you've had the experience where you've made some copies or you've written some notes and you were absolutely positive that that photocopy or those notes would make sense to you later. And chances are a few weeks or a few months later, you go back and you look at those notes and you have absolutely no idea what they are referring to. I think everyone has had that experience. I know I certainly have. So I would like to share with you some of the ways that I have found to compile those notes, to put that research together so that it makes sense not only now, but when you go back later and you look at those notes and have them make sense so that you can put these records in context so that you have good research. So that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few minutes, compiling what you find so it makes sense later. Having a system will definitely help you. Now, when I talk about a system, what I mean is having a method for how you compile things, how you write things down, how you make your notes. Because if you have a system, if you have sort of a method of doing it, then chances are seeing something later will make more sense to you because it follows a pattern. Having a system will help keep you organized. And whenever you're doing genealogy, organization sometimes seems like it's half the battle. There's so many things that we find that sometimes it's a little hard to keep track of all of it. But having a system as we're going will help keep you organized. Having a system will also keep you from searching the same source for the same information over and over. As I've often said when it comes to buying books, you know, I, I love buying a book. I'm not so crazy about buying it the second and third time. And yes, I have been known to do that. So if we have a system for how we compile our notes and how they make sense, then we won't keep looking in that same source for that exact same information because we'll be able to tell at a glance what we were looking for and whether or not we found it. And having a system will also help us evaluate information later because we'll be able to tell where that information came from. So if we can get this good system in place, then we can stay organized. We can be more efficient in our searching because we won't keep searching the same source over and over for the same thing. And we'll be able to better evaluate that information that we did find. There are really two parts to this problem when we're talking about compiling notes so that they make sense later. Um, there are really two parts to this. The first part being our research notes. But we also need to take a look at what we're doing about those conclusions. Once we make a conclusion about a family member, whether it's, I have determined that this person is the father of this other person, I've reached this conclusion that this person must have died between these two dates, whatever that conclusion is, we need to take a look at how we're recording that. Let's take a look first at the research notes. Now, if you have a stack of research that looks something like this, you know, the that, that all of your notes and all of your photocopies and whatnot, you don't really have a filing system, you have what I call the piling system. Well, I really can't help you with that part of it because I, I think that that's sort of the, uh, that's sort of the, the grail that everyone is searching for, that perfect filing system to get rid of this. But what I'm really talking about is what happens when you're going through your notes, however you have them filed or piled, and you come across a copy like this, a wonderful biography 
of a person named Andrew W. Shaw. And it is giving all sorts of wonderful biographical and genealogical information. It's talking about his parents. It's talking about his occupation. It's talking about his wife and a little bit about her family. I mean, it's a really great biography. But I have absolutely no idea where it came from. I know that it came from some place called the biographical record. But is that a book? Is that a periodical? What is this? I really don't know what this is. Is that even the title? You know, or is this just the, the section of the book? I don't know. So if I don't know where this great biography came from, chances are I could end up looking for it again later if I pick up that same book because I don't know that I already have it. And also, all of this information that's contained in here, I really can't evaluate fully for accuracy because I don't know where it came from. It's talking about events that happened in the early 1800s. Well, was this compiled during the, the time, during the, the, the life of Andrew Shaw when he could have been the one giving the information? Or was this information compiled many, many years after his death by people who really wouldn't have been there when those events happened? So I really can't evaluate any of the information in this biography because I don't know where it came from. So what I want to do when I'm at the library or I'm compiling anything and I, I make a copy, and when I say a copy, I mean not only a photocopy, but I'm also talking about scanning it or using my digital camera. I'm somehow making an image of that record. I need to know where it came from. And a couple different ways that you can do this. One way would be to simply write the title right there on this page. But let's say that you're making many photocopies out of the same book. Really simple trick. Just make a copy of the title page. And here I can see that this, this book that that biography came from was from a book called A Biographical Record of Fairfield and Perry Counties, Ohio. Now, what's also important when you're photocopying the title page or when you're you know, making a note over in the margin, is to not only get the title and the author, but make sure that you get that publication information. So I can see down here at the bottom that this book was published by the S.J. Clark Publishing Company in 1902. So that will help me later when I want to evaluate the information that I'm finding in that biography of Andrew Shaw because I can tell, I can compare when this was published, comparing it to the dates of the events in his biography. So however you capture this information, whether you're making a photocopy of the title page or you're writing the information on the side of the photocopy, make sure that you get all of that information. And just as a uh, little something to go along with that, Something that I keep in my research kit, no matter where I go do research, is a mini stapler. Because you never know when you're going to have multiple copies coming from the same source. It's just easier to have your own little stapler so you can keep that title page and all those photocopies right there together. All right. So that's really great for when you're working with books. You're working with something published. I mean, you have that great title page that, that you can pull a lot of information from. But there are other types of records that we deal with. So what if this is the record that you're talking about? So here I have a photograph of the tombstone of Jane Harrison. Well, it's giving me great information, but just taking this photograph by itself, I really don't have any context. In other words, I have no idea where this tombstone is. Well, just like we photocopied or somehow made a note of 
the title page of that book, get in the habit whenever you go to a cemetery, make the very first picture you take a picture of the cemetery sign. That way you know exactly what cemetery this set of pictures is from. This is really handy when you're going on an excursion where you're going to be going through multiple cemeteries. So just get in the habit of making the very first picture you take a picture of that cemetery sign. And for some of you cemetery veterans out there, you might be thinking, well, not every cemetery has a nice sign like this one. Improvise. Just take a, just take a, a sheet of paper, a notepad, whatever you happen to have, and just make a note, this is whatever cemetery. That way you have a nice placeholder and now you know that the photos after this belong to Maple Cemetery. So taking notes. A lot of times we get into the habit of just making a lot of photocopies, but we don't necessarily take good notes. And note taking might send chills down your spine. You might have visions of, you know, your, your 10th grade English class. But getting into the habit of taking good notes will really help you later. Because it's not enough to record what you found. You know, that's the easy part. Oh, I found this great biography. I made a photocopy and I've moved on. But what didn't you find? And again, it's that, that matter of, okay, I was looking for this. I didn't find it. I don't want to have to go to the same source again later and do that same search. So it does help to actually record what it was you were looking for. So let's take a look at some examples of what I mean by all of this. Let's say that I was looking in this book that was published by the Indiana WPA, an index to marriage records of Jay County, Indiana, 1850 to 1920. And I record that I found the marriage of, of Charles Skinner. It noted that his father was Salathiel, his mother was Amaretta, and the marriage date was the 15th of December, 1881. Well, what was I looking for? And what didn't I find? Because let's say that I wasn't just looking for the record of Charles Skinner. So why was I looking here anyway? And were there things I was looking for that I didn't find? That will help me later. So I can have that same note you know, that it's the Indiana WPA and the, the title, and I would also include the publication information. But I should make a note saying that I was looking for Matilda DeBolt Skinner's marriage to William Crossan, and I was also looking for her children's marriages. Now I should make a note that I did not find any DeBolts, I did not find any Crossans, and I didn't find any Skinners with a mother named Matilda. So that tells me later when I come across this source, oh, I've already looked there for this particular marriage. And really the only thing I found was this marriage for Charles Skinner. So I didn't find any DeBolts. I didn't find any Crossans. I don't need to look in this book again for those records because I've already looked and I've noted that I didn't find it. So again, noting what you didn't find can be just as important as noting what you did find. So what if we look in this history of Jay County, Indiana, written by Montgomery, is it enough to say that no Skinners were found? Okay, well that tells me I didn't find any Skinners. That, that seems like that should be enough. But let's compare that, let's take that same source 
what do I mean by I didn't find any Skinners? Well, there was no index and there were no Skinners listed in the table of contents. There's a big difference there. There might be Skinners in this book. I just couldn't find them because there was no index to this, you know, really long county history. So maybe if I find this book later online and it is now full text searchable, maybe I should take a look at it again. Because the printed copy didn't have an index and I didn't find any Skinners in the table of contents, but it doesn't mean that there aren't any Skinners buried somewhere in that book. Make sure that you add those comments to your notes so that it makes sense to you later, so that you're not repeating the same searches over and over. And also giving yourself ideas for further research. One of the books that I use in my research is titled Cemeteries of Madison Township, Franklin County, Ohio. And again, in my notes, I would record the author, I would record all the publishing information so that I could know exactly what book I'm referring to. But for the sake of brevity, we'll just work with the title. So Cemeteries of Madison Township, Franklin County, Ohio. Noted that I was looking for Bertha Crone. And going through the index, there are no Bertha Crones listed. But I need to make an important note. The cemetery readings in this book only include deaths before 1920. So did Bertha die after 1920? If she did, she's not going to be listed in this book. She might be buried in Madison Township, but she's not going to be included in this book because the book stops at 1920. So adding those comments to my notes, it triggers some thoughts that, okay, if I find that she did die in Madison Township after 1920, I should take a look at some other resources to see if I can tell where she was buried because this book isn't going to tell me. So again, adding those comments to my notes is going to help me with my research later. So that's been a lot about our research notes. What about the conclusions that we reach? How can they make more sense to us later? Well, it's easy to record the facts that we find, and it's pretty easy to record our conclusions. You know, if you're using something like Family Tree Maker, you know, it's really easy to go in and add those facts and add those conclusions that we make. We do it all the time. But how did we reach those conclusions, especially those conclusions that we reach when it's not based upon a single record or it's not really spelled out for us? That's where we need to do a little bit more explanation. So. Here's a record from, uh, from Family Tree Maker, uh, one of the family trees that I'm working on right now. And one of the people in my tree is Unknown Ramsey. I don't know a first name. I don't know the person's sex. All I know is that this person died before 1910. Well, that's all well and good. And I, I certainly should have sources for all of that. but. It's one of those cases where it's not exactly spelled out. Even, even if you look at the source for this, which is going to be the 1910 census, it's not obvious how I, got, how I came to this conclusion that, that John Ramsey and his wife Melzena had a child who died before 1910. How do I know that? Well, what I want to do is to go in and create a note for Unknown Ramsey. And make this note that the 1910 census reports that Melzena Ramsey had 11 children, five living. The five living children have been accounted for. This child must have died before 1910. So 
that's telling me how I came to this conclusion that there is a child in this family who died before 1910. I don't know any other information, but I know that this child existed, again, based on the census. Now, obviously with the census or with this, um, when I'm in Family Tree Maker, I'm going to add that as a source. I'm going to add that 1910 census as a source, but it's really good to get into the habit of adding that note to tell how you came to this conclusion rather than just listing the source. So when it comes to compiling clearly, give your copies context. And again, when I refer to copies, I'm talking about photocopies, photographs, scans, digital images, anything like that. Give it some context, whether it's the title page, the publication information, the sign at the front of the cemetery, whatever it is, so that later you can tell exactly where that piece of information came from. Add comments to your notes. What were you looking for? Why were you even in this source to begin with? What didn't you find? And also make comments about the source itself, that there was no index, and this cemetery record ends at 1920. So make those comments, which will help you evaluate that information later. Explain your conclusions. And remember that when it comes to compiling your notes so that you can really get the full benefit from them, it's a habit. You know, it's, it's a habit that you have to practice to get into that habit of making the photocopy of the title page, taking a picture of the front of the cemetery, you know, making notes about how you reach that conclusion. It's a habit, and the only way to improve is to keep doing it. Do it repeatedly, make it a habit, and it will become second nature to you. And your research really will benefit from having a good habit like this. All right, next week on the archives.com live stream, we are going to go across the pond using the UK censuses. So if you have ancestry from the United Kingdom, you have uh, you have ancestors who came from the British Isles, be sure to join us next Wednesday, June the 12th, at the same time, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. And we are going to talk about those wonderful UK censuses and how you can use them in your research. In the meantime, stay connected with archives.com, whether it's on our blog, liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, 140 characters at a time, and also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, which I have the URL right there. For those of you who are watching this live, pop on over sometime to our YouTube channel and you can watch all of our previous live stream videos over there. If you are watching this on YouTube later, uh, join us on Wednesdays and come into the chat room. Uh, I'm usually able to stop in at the chat room and answer some questions afterwards. Uh, I will be able to do that today, so I will be popping over there just momentarily. And in the meantime, again, next week our topic will be using the UK Census. And until next Wednesday, this is Amy Johnson Crow wishing you happy researching. <laughs>